Hello, and welcome to this episode of Geeking Off, where we're going to be getting retro. Computers. Gaming. Retro gear. Devices. Tech reviews. And more. Geeking Off with Android. What do I mean by that? I got some controllers here. We've got from the first Nintendo an NES controller. From the second one, we've got a Super NES controller. And for the third one, we've got an N64 controller. All of these are USB um, devices. So therefore, they should work with emulators and whatnot. Um, first one we got here, we got a standard NES controller we're gonna unbox. Um, it says it's plug and play, made for Windows. And that on the back, um, some little information. Um, it says it's got the retro feel. So let's find out. Let's go ahead and unbox this one. Okay. All right, inside the box we get, that's it. Just a controller in there. And, oh my God. The realness of this is quite impressive. I was expecting something a little bit more, eh, well, plastic is a little darker, but I'm not sure what that's all about. This button's a little shorter than that one, but I guess we'll find out if it works. Kind of got a good feel to it. Um, start, select. That button makes me nervous though. Hopefully this won't be a return. As you can see, not impressed with that. So hopefully it works. Wow, it's got a really long cord on it. Cool. Next one, we've got the Super NES controller written in Japanese here. Yeah. Uh, USB Gameu Pado. Okay. It's all in Japanese, of course, for Windows 8, Windows 7, but we're going to be using it on a Linux machine. And there's the back. It's got all the buttons, turbo. So let's go ahead and unbox this one. Okay, at least this one comes with instructions. And unless you know Japanese, you can't really read that well. <laughs> Didn't know what this, you know, was going to be a Japanese version when I bought it. It looked better in the pictures. Okay, there's the cord. Yeah, it's a little shorter than the other one. So yeah, there's the controller. Now this doesn't feel like a Super NES controller. Buttons feel very hard and plasticky. Yeah. Back of it. The shoulder buttons. All your normal buttons here. Start and select and tur uh, turbo and clear. So this can be doubled up as a turbo pad. I think I like the feel of this one though better than the classic one. Like I said, that weird button on the other one kind of kind of makes me upset. And now it's time for the N64 controller here. Um, this is USB compatible with PC or Mac. Of course, as again, should work with Linux. 3D analog joystick, uh, six foot cable. So I think that'll probably be the shortest one of them all. So let's go ahead and unplastic this. one actually came with a disc and it, from my experience with these type of drivers discs don't use them especially in Windows they usually always have a Trojan or so yeah this is the shortest of them all <laughs> um, oh wow it even has a I wonder of how that works oh I think it's just yeah it's just blank there's nothing in there but I guess if you want to stick something in there you can so a rumble pack is not gonna work with this um, yeah, this feels, see, how do we used to hold these, yeah. Joystick feels really good, as again, this is a very close to authentic feel here. I'm liking it. It's Mario Kart with this, it's a golden eye. Yeah. So there we go. We've got some retro gaming controllers now to make emulation on the PC a little bit more 
authentic. But there we go, and we'll be testing these babies out. All right, let's test out these controllers. First one we got up here, of course, is the um, NES controller. Let's go ahead and load it up. All right, let's see how this feels. Well, even though that A button's pushed in, it's still pressable, which means it's not like jamming down or nothing. It feels like you're pressing a button, so that's, that's really good. Oh, that was a dumb move. See how it runs? Just jam through this first level. Man, yeah, this is bringing back the nostalgia. I know there's something hidden here. Don't remember where. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm Mario. Boy, controls in older Mario games were quite interesting. Uh huh. Yeah, die, 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 die. You know what? I'm, I'm get away from me. So, ooh. A little rusty at the game, but it does kind of have that feel as the NES controller, but not quite. It still feels very uh, um, plasticky and chunky. The A button works fine. I'm not noticing a difference between the A and the B, so that's good. At least the button's not damaged. And that's that. Um, yeah, like I was saying, the... A button, even though it's in a little bit further, is not bothering me. I might take this apart, and we'll see what's inside of it. So, let's go move on to the next controller. Alright, we got the Super NES controller here. Gonna try it on my favorite Super Nintendo game of all time, which is Donkey Kong Country. So, let's... Okay. Kinda has that feel. It's not as cheap and plasticky as the previous one. The buttons feel pretty good when being pressed. Um, yeah, got the shoulder buttons here. Let's see if everything is pretty much functional. Enter this first level here. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Pause is working. Um, roll, uh, jump, but down and stop. Yep, that's good. Uh, I need to get a barrel here. See how this feels to me. Play the first level like we did with Mario. And just see how this feels in my hand. See if it feels nostalgic. Ooh, that Y button didn't hit when I hit it right. Let's try that again. It didn't feel right. Okay, there we go. It's again, probably kind of rusty here as well. I mean, it's been a long time since I've played any of these games. And kind of the reason why I got the controllers, because playing on a keyboard is no fun. Um... For me, it's I can't get a hold of any old school um, Nintendo hardware, and I'm not going to pay a pretty penny just to play some video games. Because even though I like this, you know, um, retro gaming, um, I don't play enough to, you know, spend all that money on uh, newer games. Um, not newer games. What am I trying to say? <laughs> on older games, new old games. There you go. I'm not even know what I'm saying. I'm kind of distracted by the music, which you guys can't hear because I, you know, YouTube and it's oh, weirdness. Oh, that was just lovely. That's how I feel about YouTube copyright claims. Okay, Diddy. I usually like to play as Diddy more. He's he's a lot more faster, more agile. But that's just feeling just like it did back in the old days. Yeah, I'm liking that. Yeah. Still has not as cheap as the NES controller feel to it, but it definitely. I really felt like I was playing a Super Nintendo there, and yeah, I think this one's probably so far the best. I guess we've got to try the uh, N64 controller next. Another uh, favorite. Got the N64. On Mario Kart. Yeah. This. We'll do one race and see how I feel about this one. Uh, we'll do 100, because, like I said, I've been rusty. I haven't played this in years. I always got to pick my main man, DK. Okay. Mario is so weird sometimes. Uh, which one has... Ah, it's my favorite track right there. Yes. Let's see how this feels. All right, here we go. Let's do this. Ooh, got a bad start. 
Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, that was not good. Oh, yeah. So far, controller-wise... Ooh. Controller-wise, this is probably the best feeling one of all three. This really feels like the authentic N64 controller. The joystick moves right. Oh, that was dumb. Why did I do that? Well, got him anyways. Okay. Never did like the items on that one. Yeah, jump works. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tight fit, tight fit. All right, princess. Ah. Uh, feels like a... Oh, princess, you are out of my way, princess. Yeah. Oh, man, I like the feel of this controller. Best one out of all three. Come here, princess. Come here, girly. Ooh. Oh, well. Didn't even have to waste a shell on you. <laughs> yeah. Around the turnpike. I don't know. Uh, maybe the joystick's not quite as maybe sensitive. But then again, this is emulated, so I'm not running this on real hardware. Oh yeah, I'm gonna kill myself. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. No, no, no. Don't come back. Don't come back. All right. Fill this up with bananas. I used to like this track the most because I love driving in the traffic. Um, Need for Speed has that feel. We get to drive amongst uh, traffic and bye bye princess oh no that's gonna hurt oh this is gonna hurt worse oh princess come here you little oh no 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 princess no princess you no princess oh those items well, not bad for not playing this one in a few years ah I wouldn't have hit in that truck. Oh, I'm rage quitting this. Uh, but yeah, so far, this was the best out of all three. Well, remember that driver disc that came with the N64 controller? I think we should check it out. Let's see what's written on it. Hmm. What's written on it says 25 minutes, 225 megabytes. Do not put in direct sunlight. Let's see. Button in the sunlight. Okay. Now, well, let's go ahead and pop that in there. Alright. Let's see what's on this baby. One little file that says VL809 and 64 PC.exe. That's it. No manual, no nothing. Just a file that's 1.7 uh, megabits. With that, I think what I'm going to do next is get into the uh, this controller here and see if I can't repair that button. So that's what I'm going to do next, so we'll see you in the next segment. Alright, so let's go ahead and open this up. Alright, we are inside. Wow, there's not much to that, is there? Wow. Let's go ahead and... Let's open these buttons, shall we? All right, so the main board looks all right. So let's take a look at these buttons. And believe it or not, the issue is, is the plastic in the inside, the plastic in the inside is a little bit shorter on one than it is the other. So I think what I could do is get away with a small piece of paper in there, just enough to raise it up. Now we've got a little makeshift wedge to kind of lift it up a bit. Well, interesting. The wedge idea didn't work because look at the A button. It's still down. I figured out the problem. It's because the board is only screwed down from the center. So the end of it here actually lifts up inside. Oh, what do you know? Switching the pads evened it out. Look at that. 
but I'm wondering how that'll hold up when oh, it's still holding up, see? Very even. And all I did was just switch the little um, membrane pads. So let's go ahead and put this back together. Um, just one of the buttons just made from the back three is a little shorter than the other. So, it's one of those things I'm pretty much going to have to probably order another one if I want to use it, but disappointment there, that one fails right there for that. I even tried to fix it. There's even a project board pushing it up as far as it can. As you can see, it's not as great as it should be, but it's pretty close. I guess for cheap Chinese quality, can't expect much, can you? Are these uh, retro controllers worth it? Well, can't remember the brand of this one, but the only thing it says on the back is made in China. This had to be the worst one of them all because the A button, just, just dysfunctional, was able to fix it almost 100%, I'd say. It's close and it's close enough to work for how cheap this item is. But yeah, this one was the cheapest one out of them all. Not really worth it unless you play, play a lot of games. I'd recommend buying something a lot higher quality. This one um, is a step up in quality from uh, Buffalo Classic USB Gamepad. This really almost feels authentic. A little cheap and plasticky, but at least all the buttons are positioned right and feel right when you press them. That's what matters. And I play a little bit more Super Nintendo, probably more than I would the regular, so I'm not too worried about that one. So this one is definitely a go on my book. And then my favorite out of all of them here is the Retro Link um, Nintendo 64 controller. This thing feels so authentic, the real deal. I really can't tell a difference except for when you know you're playing on an emulator in 64 emulation on a computer. It is a little weird because um, the N64 is just one of the hardest things to emulate out of all the systems, and not all the games run 100%. But for out of all of them, I'm definitely going to enjoy playing some GoldenEye with this. I've been playing um, Donkey Kong 64 with it, and um, minus there's no force feedback in it, they could have probably done something with that. So you can play it with other games, because this, believe it or not, works great on other games like Tux Racer, which is a Linux uh, kart racing game, and it works really well with that. It really uh, makes the game more fun. So you can also use these not only just for your emulators, but you can use them for playing other games get that retro feel. Um, this one, don't waste your time with junk. These two are my favorite. Like I said, I play these two systems more. Um, um, if you really want authentic, you can buy a, the real controller used and then use the USB adapter to play the games. Uh, but if you're gonna go that far, you might as well just buy the system. And for me, I don't wanna buy, you know, expensive retro, um, gaming consoles and games and controllers just for you know playing maybe once or twice a month I really don't play that much but uh, for my level of play whenever I get that nostalgic itch I can go ahead and play with these and also I like playing my other games with this one so that's really a cool bonus so there you have it guys um, take my advice dump that one in the trash and that driver disc too yeah yeah just toss it All right, this has been Anthony from Anthware, and from this time and every time on, folks, remember to keep on clicking.